Red Hat developers, this is Jason from the Red Hat Developers Program. Welcome back to Summit 2017 at the Dev Zone. Today we have Don Schenk, who's going to teach us how to install uh, .NET on RHEL in under five minutes. Jason, so I have a VM here. Let me just run the .NET command to show you it's not there. So we're going to install .NET on RHEL. The first thing I'm going to do is become super user. Otherwise, I have to type sudo for every command, and that's just a hassle. So the, I'm just going to copy and paste the commands here. The point isn't that I type out every command, the point is that you see it's only a couple of commands to get it installed. So the first thing I'll do is get my subscription manager attached to the correct pool of RPMs. That's the packages I pull down. When you install .NET on RHEL, you're getting the package from Red Hat. You're not getting it from Microsoft. We get the source code from Microsoft and then we build it to run on RHEL. Uh, Red Hat packages are, I like to say, vetted, and that is we, we test them and make sure they work really well, so you're not just pulling down software and hoping it works. So now I'm going to do a, enable the repo. So I, I, I'm attached to it, now I have to enable it. Notice at the end where it says this RHEL 7 server, there's also a workstation, and there's also one for an HP special computing thing that I'm not really familiar with. The point is you're probably going to use .NET server, a uh, RHEL server to install .NET. One of the cool things about the new .NET Core, as opposed to the old one, is the new .NET is much smaller. Whereas before, when you installed .NET, you would drop in a DVD or a CD and wait forever for it to install, and you would get four gigabytes of .NET. Now it's just a couple hundred megabytes. So I'm going to yum install these SCL utils. It doesn't matter what they do. They just enable installation. Let's just leave it at that. It, there's nothing to do because I've done that before, but that's okay. It's better to have nothing to do than to skip the step. Now here's the actual install itself. I want you to notice it's just a command line and it, it's a yum install, .NET Core 1.1, which is version 1.1. It's going to go up to the interwebs and, and pull down all, everything it needs to install it. Your limiting factor here is going to be your internet speed. Uh, other than that, that's it for installing .NET. It really is that small and that fast. After it's installed, you have to enable it uh, to be available in Bash. And once, once that's done, we'll bring it up and we'll see .NET. All right, one final step here, and in just a few minutes, we went from not having .NET, I don't know if I can copy and paste here, bear with me. Okay, it's enabled. Now we should have .NET command available. There it is, so if I do a .NET, uh, let's see if I make a directory and go into it and do a .NET new, which will create a new program. The first time you do a .NET new, it's going to run this little expand. So that, that might be considered the final step of installing .NET. Um, but that's it. That's all you have to do to install .NET. That's it, thank you.